This is Genealogy Chat. It's a beautiful day, just wonderful. Uh, we're coming from the Willinar Genealogy Center, which is a service of the Eckhart Public Library. We're, we're live, streaming from our Facebook show, and you're welcome to come down and watch the show. You can come today, any week. We'd be happy to have you in the studio audience. So uh, we got a lot to do today, so let's get started. Uh, the Auburn Minute, and this time I selected something you're never going to guess. You're not going to get it. The other ones are always easy. This one, no way. Okay, first clue. <laughs> the purpose was to rid the city of saloons. What do you think? No? Not yet. It was dedicated in 1914. Hmm. Oh. No? Uh, it was a place for men to hang out. Hmm. No? Uh, in 1921, women were allowed. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, this building had, has a gym, showers, a pool, and a bowling alley. Hmm. Nope. Um, it was also the site of the teen canteen. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> and its location was 310 North Main Street. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. So let's go to the, the computer wow. and we'll show you the answer. It is the YMCA. <laughs> and there's a picture of, of the outside. And the next slide is a picture of the inside. It's men, men uh, doing, doing their gymnastics. Looks like the beginning of the YMCA song, though. It does, doesn't it? YMCA. That's right. Maybe that's where it was created. Who knows? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you all knew it was the YMCA. I, mean, I didn't stump you. It wasn't difficult. So maybe next week I'll choose something that, that's hard that you won't guess. So <laughs> I want to introduce my very good friends who've been on the show before. And I'm so happy you're back. Bree was on the very first show. I was. We did a search, familysearch.org for a very beneficiary, beneficiary mm -hmm. Charles Eckhart. Yep. And then we oh, have God. Rebecca Mann, who was here, I believe it was in May. Somewhere around then. And yeah. you discussed ghosts of uh, the military. Mm -hmm. I love my hauntings. Your hauntings, I yes. I love my hauntings. Oh. Yeah. Hauntings, mm -hmm. and, yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so today, they're going to tell us about the Romanov family um, of Russia, and they're also going to talk about Anastasia, the musical, as well as the film. I believe it's Disney. Is it Disney? Fox, I believe. Not Fox, but I yeah, Fox. Fox but okay, took over. as well as the Fox. Yes. Um, <laughs> and first, these lovely ladies <laughs> created T-shirts. <laughs> mm -hmm. And ladies, if you'll stand up and, and model them, we'd greatly appreciate mm -hmm. it. Can you tell us anything about the front and the back so the of the T-shirts? Of course. So the front is actually kind of based off of the program. Um, if you can, I don't know if you can see it very well on the CD, but if you notice, there is the Russian Cathedral and the Eiffel Tower in Paris, as well as the Alexandre uh, Bridge, which is dedicated to Alexander III, who was the, one of the czars of Russia. So we decided to kind of pinpoint that a little bit. Um, so we created um, Russia crossing the bridge and into Paris. Um, and we have the, one of the lyrics of the song is called, uh, the song is called Stay I Pray You. So we have that on the front. And I'm gonna turn around, Rebecca, mm -hmm. you wanna come back? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. So the back um, says, um, <laughs> "Let I, me. I, can't read the I can read it. Oh, thank you. Let me have a moment. Let me say goodbye. I'll bless my homeland 
till I die. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kind of a somber song in this, but we decided to go with that because one, the song, uh, for me, it really touched me personally, just because with what's going on in the Ukraine, it really kind of sets the mood and also what happened in Russia after the Romanovs, um, unfortunately, were executed. It really kind of pinpointed a fact like, okay, we now have to leave our homeland. We don't want to leave, but we know if we stay, it's only going to get worse from here. And we'll get into that. We'll get into more detail that later. But, you know, they're, they're still going to call Russia home, even though, you know, they have to go to a different country. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what's all. It is. It's gorgeous. Well, thank you, ladies. So I know everybody's eager to, to hear about them and the musical. So uh, tell us your story and lay it on us. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, so I guess we have to start from the beginning and yes. talk about the Romanovs yes. first before mm -hmm. we go into the musical. Mm -hmm. So so we have here, Mon Live the Romanovs. And to start, well, we must start with the entire Romanov family. So the Romanov family, of course, consisted of the Tsar and the Tsarina, as well as their five children, Grand Duchess Olga, Grand Duchess Tatiana, Grand Duchess Maria, Grand Duchess Anastasia, and Grand Duke Alexei, who sadly showed signs of hemophilia six weeks after he was born. So the crowning of the new Tsar, before he started this beautiful family with his wife, he was crowned after Tsar Alexander III passed away from kidney disease. It was sudden. He was not ready to take the crown. He was not trained to do so. And he refused to rule alone. He was adamant that he would marry before he took the throne. So he married Alexandra amongst a lot of scrutiny. It was highly frowned upon, and it wasn't done, but he went through with it anyways. And then after his marriage, he, of course, had his coronation, and that did not go well for him either. No. Um, <laughs> it was tradition for people to come out and see the new Tsar, to come out to the Winter Palace and celebrate. They would get food and gifts, but sadly, a rumor began that there wasn't enough, and so people started to stampede and 1,400 lives were lost during that mm -hmm. stampede. And Tsar Nicholas wanted to discontinue festivities. He's like, I want to be there for my people. He was advised not to do so by a family member, and so he partied on, and that did not reflect well to the start of his reign at all. No. <clears throat> and now we're further into his reign, and it's not getting better. Um, on January 21st, 1905, that day went down as Bloody Sunday. The people were not happy. They were disgruntled. They didn't like their current living conditions or their working conditions. So they said, hey, Sar's on our side. He's just not down here with us. He's not here mingling with the people. So we'll go see him. We'll go talk to him. He's on our side. So they decide one, to go to the Winter Palace. 120,000 Russian citizens went to the Winter Palace, not realizing the Tsar wasn't even there. He was at his country home with his wife and family. So when they arrived, they were met with soldiers who did not know how to respond to the fact that there was suddenly this huge crowd coming towards them. So they opened fire on the citizens and killed 150 to 200 men, women, and children. And they wounded 450 to 800 men, women, and children. Not a great continuation to his reign. And, and it only is going to get worse. Yeah, mm -hmm. it gets worse. Um, Russia enters World War I in 1914 because, well, Germany declared war. And they didn't do well in terms of battles. They lost a lot of battles, lost a lot of lives. Mm -hmm. Russian people were not happy. They were not happy with the Tsar's reign. Mm -hmm. They wanted him there, and he wasn't, sadly. And then this is when it starts to get we a ton of division. Into, yeah, we get into some nitty-grittiness here because you have... Citizen versus citizen, there are people in Russia who are saying, we need to change, and there are other people who are saying, you know, no. let's not change. Mm -hmm. But then that's where we see the sneaking of communism coming in, and it just becomes uh, this outcry of rebellion. Um, there's neighbor against neighbor. People are turning on, on each other, and it's just getting worse as time goes on, and Nicholas is not doing anything. And the people are blaming Nicholas for this when really Nicholas 
really was kind of thrust upon into this role, and he had nothing to go on. Absolutely nothing. An intriguing advisors, as you'll soon see. Yeah. So one of his advisors is this man. This is Grigory Rasputin, and this is where things kind of start to take a turn for the worse for the family. Um, Alexei is still struggling with hemophilia at this time, and he is falling so sick that his mother is going against every doctor's advice to get him into a hospital to get proper treatment. So what does she do, like a, like a mom at this point? She turns to prayer. She and her husband hear of this self-proclaimed prophet and healer, and they decide to bring him to the palace. And just like that, he has this quote-unquote gift, and he somehow manages to heal Alexei's hemophilia. Um, with that, the uh, Nicholas and Alexander are giving him such high praise, they decide to make him a high influencer and advisor onto the royal court, and he became a confidant in political affairs during World War I and other issues rising in Russia. The rest of the family hated that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he got particularly very close with the Tsarina and the girls, um, but like Rebecca said, some of the royal family was not liking this, so what do they go and do? Instead of saying, hey, you need to get off, they decide, okay, you're gone. You're going to be dead. Just so kill the man. Yeah. So on December 30th, 1916, two members of Nicholas's family, distant family, decide to uh, take matters into their own hand, and they end up killing uh, Rasputin with a single gunshot to the head. But before that, there, he, were... there were multiple attempts on his life. Um, there was a peasant woman who... Called him the devil. And, yeah, there were multiple assassination attempts. Uh, this guy basically was not easy to kill. <laughs> but if you look at him, you know, I look at this picture and I'm just like, okay, why would you trust this guy? Seriously, why would you trust him? But like we said, it only gets worse from there. Uh, in 1917 in March, um, this is where Nicholas decides, I'm done, so he abdicates the throne. He also removes his son Alexei from the throne, and that caused a lot of riots, and riots were still going on when the abdication was going on. He begged his brother Mikhail to take the throne, but he decided, nope, I'm not taking the I'm not taking on this mess. That's when the Bolsheviks, which is a group um, I believe uh, in southern Russia, I'm not 100 percent sure, uh, seized the Winter Palace and then placed the royal family under house arrest. They were then transferred to a safe house, quote-unquote, to Yekaterinburg, outside of St. Petersburg, um, to be protected from rebels that were going on and getting more rioted in St. Petersburg. Um, the leader of the Bolsheviks at this time, with the family at least, was Yakov Yorovsky, and he was in charge of the family's royal guard and um, their protection, or so they thought. Suppose protection. Mm-hmm. So the family is still under house arrest at this time. Um, Yurovsky and his men were then given orders in the middle of the night, you have to execute the family. On July, on the morning of July 16th and 17th of 1918, the royal family were woken up from their beds, told to get dressed. They were escorted down into the basement of their safe house. And mind you, this is a stone, in, I believe it was a stone encapsulated room. So it's cold, it's damp. Um, they were told that they are going to be down here for their protection, but also to be taken, get a photograph taken for their uh, people to understand, hey, you know, we we're need fine. to let you know we're still alive. We're good. We're protecting but them. Sadly, though, um, Yurovsky comes in, reads execution orders, and then Yurovsky and his men open fire in the basement. And according to written records, it was absolute chaos. I mean, can you imagine in that in that stone enclosed room, there's multiple men assigned to each person and gunfire is going off. There's going to be ricocheting bullets everywhere. There's going to be screaming. There's chaos. It, it was a nightmare. Um, sorry, I'm trying not to get emotional because this is really sad. Um, the entire royal family, five children, their parents, four loyal servants, and even their family dog were all killed during this. Once the smoke was cleared, um, anybody who was still breathing or they deemed still alive were either then stabbed uh, by bayonets 
or shot to death by a single shot through the heart or the head. So the question begged to differ then, were there any survivors after this? So after the shooting, Yurovsky ordered his men that we need to dispose of the bodies before people find, found out because they had to cover this up. The Russian people didn't know what was going on with this. Unplanned cover-up. So this is going to be a rush. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what could go wrong? As they were gathering up the members of the family, they were unaware that the princesses had in, sewn in their corsets their family jewels. So basically, these were makeshift bulletproof vests, which is why they were having such difficulty killing them in the first place because they were aiming them in their chest or their or their torsos. You know, those jewels are going to act like a bulletproof vest. They're going to ricochet everywhere. They're just going to nick them, uh, render them unconscious. But sadly, that didn't happen. Um, once everybody was basically stripped of their clothing and their valuables. Every, all the bodies were then loaded onto a truck, and then they were, play, they were heading to a forest outside of Yekaterinburg for, to a burial site. Um, they decided to start with one grave, and they decided to take five of the bodies. They soaked them in acid and placed them in a shallow mine that they found. And using hand grenades at the time, they decided to try and collapse the mine, but that was a failure. It didn't work. Nope. And Yurovsky and his men were running out of time. So they had to bury them quickly and then move on to another and then they moved on to another site for the remainder of for the remainder of the family. They then decided, okay, we have to take more drastic measures. So they decided to take the last remaining members, dismember them, and soak them again in acid and set them on fire. And this was only a few, like less than a mile away from the original grave. Afterward, the Bolsheviks then told the Russian people, hey, we killed the Tsar, but had no confession whatsoever to the family. To everyone else, the family was still alive. This is where we get rumors starting about Anastasia, Anastasia. being alive. So Anna Anderson. Um, she came into news a little bit in 1920, almost three years after the family's murder. She was, she showed up in a psychiatric hospital, no memory. Um, years later, after it started to feel a little bit safer, she's like, oh, maybe I can come forward. She stated she was the Grand Duchess Anastasia. Mm -hmm. Was that true? A lot of family members believe so. Yes, she looks a lot like her, which these two comparison photos of Anastasia and Anna Anderson, mm -hmm. there's some similarities there. Yeah, and the but, timing of it was right. She'd be the exact same age at the time. Physicality-wise, she looked the same. I mean, they even had um, a royal family member found, find um, a wound that Anastasia would have had on her foot, and Anna Anderson had that same wound. So literally, physically, she was, was Anastasia. But like, there's, there's no denying that. Yeah, there was one family member that's like, no, no, that's yep. not Anastasia. Her uncle's like, that's not my niece. So he fought the claim. Um, he hired a private investigator to look into her story and found that she was not Anastasia. She was a Polish worker that kind of just appeared out of the blue. Mm -hmm. And she strongly believed she was Anastasia. She, oh, went, yeah. she went to her deathbed believing mm -hmm. she was Anastasia. She refused to give that up. Yep. But we find out later it's not. Mm -hmm. Possible. Um, a few years after Anna Anderson's passing, there were still some unanswered questions about as to what happened to the Grand Duchess Anastasia and her family. Until, um, if we're looking at historical times, December 25th, 1991, communism is finally gone. It's done. And this is when uh, Russian archaeologists, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, were able to find an unmarked grave in 1991 and found five skeletons um, that were part of the royal family. They found out, uh, you know, through DNA and technology at the time that these were parts of the royal family. However, the church did not recognize any of the bones or the family members um, as saints until it was incontestably proven that these were the missing Romanov family because, you know, 
There's you, still you, uncertainty. Yeah, I mean, you go through years and years of hoping, and then it's proven to be a lie. You're going to have questions, and you're going to be hesitant about this. Plus, some of the members were missing, mm-hmm. so there was still some yes. question of what happened. Because they're definitely in the one grave. You have the Tsar, the Tsarina, and three of his daughters, two of which they could identify as Olga Tatiana, but who was the third? They didn't know. Mm-hmm. It wasn't until later, after going through discovering some secrets from Yurovsky, that there was a second grave. And finding Alexei and the possibility of another, you know, another child with him, another daughter. And then years later, 2007, DNA testing comes about. And they realize, oh, he, Alexei was buried with Maria. Anastasia was in the original grave. Mm-hmm. That's when they can finally be like, okay, we have everyone. Yep. We can start recognizing them and claim mm-hmm. them as saints. Mm-hmm. So the family is reunited um, after many years. However, it doesn't end there. Because we actually, there are descendants of the Romanov line still alive, and it happens to be Prince William and Prince Harry, the Duke of Cambridge and Sussex. Their grandfather is the grandnephew of Tsarina Alexandra, and they're also the great grands, excuse me, great great grandson of Nicholas the First. So literally, we have the United Kingdom's royal family as living descendants of the Romanov line. Maybe not of Nicholas II's line, but of the Romanov family. High note there, since that was a sad story earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, and to keep it high and slightly happy. The reason why we decided to do this. <laughs> so Bri and I somehow found ourselves at the same musical, same day, same time, in South Bend, Indiana. Mm-hmm. Did not plan it at all. She was nope. in the balcony seats. I was down below. Mm-hmm. It was a beautiful musical. Mm-hmm. And it's got a slightly different storyline compared to, because I grew up with the little cute animated movie, Anastasia. As where did I. Mm-hmm. The bad guy is Rasputin. But in terms of her story, when Anna Anderson and all that, Rasputin was dead long before the execution of the Romanovs. So he couldn't really be the antagonist in the actual true story. And the musical tries to stay a little bit more historical. So they have an antagonist, but he's the son of a Bolshevik. You know, those who originally were a part of the difficulties in Russia. So it's a different antagonist. It was a beautiful musical. It really was. I mean, I love the interpretation that they did. They honored the history and really stayed true to Russian culture when they were in Russia, and then honored it when they were they finally went to Paris. Yeah. And we have some favorite songs and everything from this mm-hmm. movie. It had Once Upon a December in it. Mm-hmm. They did a great job. Yeah, the original, for those of you who have watched the original movie, m- almost every one of the original songs from the movie made it into the musical, with a couple of exceptions. Um, and then there's some original ones that they created for the musical's purpose that were just absolutely amazing. They were great. Mm-hmm. That's mostly what we have. Of mm-hmm. course, we're amateurs, so don't quote us on everything we said. Yes. If we said something wrong, please leave a comment and let us know so that way we can correct yeah, our and knowledge. If we, and if we have something historically inaccurate, I apologize. We apologize. Like, like Rebecca said, we are amateurs. We're not professionals. This is just a project we decided, like, wow, we need to share this. It's like, oh my gosh, we're at the same musical. What are the chances? Like, seriously, what are the chances? Yeah. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> weird. It was, it, I wouldn't call it weird. I, call, <laughs> I really call it like a spark of chance, you know? <laughs> I, you know, maybe it was, maybe, um, you know, what, isn't there a line in um, Mike Petersburg that was like an epiphany for Dimitri in that? Well, I think it was more just an epiphany that... You can call it Leningrad, but it's still St. Petersburg, you know. New name, same empty stomachs. Yeah. (laughs) Well, this is Bree Weeks, and this is Rebecca Mann, and I have some questions for you, ladies. Of course. So why are we interested in this family, but not, let's say, Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette? What's special about them as well as Anastasia? Um, I think what's really uh, special about the Romanov family, especially with Anastasia, is because um, aside from the media, you know, there's plethora of media on the Romanov family. But I think with the story behind Anastasia and thinking that, oh my gosh, could this woman have possibly survived such a dark, bloody massacre 
and to think that she could have told her story, um, you know, it kind of created a, fa a, a fairy tale the whole world could possibly believe. And um, I think, you know, it's such a tragic story that, you know, I look at it as, you know, history shouldn't repeat itself, but it's also a, a way to commemorate, you know, this was, yes, they were royal, but they were a family like anybody else. Anastasia, believing that she was alive, it was hope for the people too, that yes. something so horrible didn't actually happen. Mm -hmm. So I think we try in history and we make stories mm -hmm. and we hope mm -hmm. it doesn't always end well, Yes, but we need that hope mm -hmm. to get through hard times. And I think that's why they want, they you know, later on they created, um, they actually created a 1956 movie with Ingrid Bergman mm -hmm. and Yul Brenner, and that's actually about Anna Anderson's point of view of becoming the Grand Duchess and coming to realization like she is Anastasia because as we said, Anna took to her grave that she was the princess. But um, I think, you know, when it comes to fantasy versus reality, we wanna believe the fantasy of it, but it also gives people an understanding, you know, oh, what if I research this? And then they come to that realization like, okay, it obviously didn't happen, but everything here makes for a great story. You know, the movie, the movies made for a great story, the musical made for a great story, but also keeping to history. And that's what I think is missing from anything like this is that you're missing the history of it because I didn't know anything about communism until I started researching Anastasia and um, things like that. And it's just opened my eyes to about how closed off they were during that regime. And it's, it's awful. That's right. Terrible, terrible. Um, I have another question for you. You brought all of these wonderful <laughs> yes, items. We did. Please explain. Tell us about each one. Why don't we start mm -hmm. down here? I guess to start from this end, we have some alternate, histor alternate historical fiction in our teen collection here at the library. Um, possibility of if Anastasia lived. This one actually deals more with Alexi, the brother. And then, of course, we have the CD from the musical itself, because, which I think we will hopefully add to our collection. <laughs> <laughs> That's dependent on some, some other factors, so yes. we won't worry about that. Yeah, and then we have the 1997 animated movie that a majority of us grew up with. Uh, like Rebecca said, this features Rasputin as the villain. There's some really cute animal characters in here, um, but it makes for a beautiful story. And there's also some big names in, uh, who provided the voices um, here. Uh, one of them being Angela Lansbury. So she's in this, as well as Meg Ryan and Kelsey Grammer. There's a lot of big names in this movie, so I we highly recommend this. Um, but we also have some historical uh, books here at the library. So this is about the, the sisters, all the sisters in the Romanov family. And then we have this one here, which is about um, the last empress, which is, this is about um, their mom, Alexandria. So as far as fiction and history, you know, we have a wide variety. Um, but as far as the musical itself, um, like Rebecca said, we have, uh, there's the musical CD, and then there's a little keychain right here, which has the Eiffel Tower, the music box, and then Anastasia's um, signature A. And then we have the merchandise from the show. Most of these are Rebecca's. We have um, the, broad, the original Broadway shirt, and then, I believe this is your favorite, am I right, oh, yeah. Rebecca? Um, there's another song uh, called In a Crowd of Thousands, and this is featuring um, Dimitri and, Anasta and, and, and Anya, and it's that silhouette, that famous silhouette that we all love so much. And then this is the tour program book that I purchased, because unfortunately we didn't actually have handheld programs due to obvious circumstances, but I figured this would be a great addition to um, at least my personal collection as a theater bug. Um, so yeah, there's there's a lot out there when it comes to Anastasia. And we hear more about Anastasia, I think, because of that fairy tale like story. Not to say that Louis the Sixteenth and Marie Antoinette are not important. There are movies out there mm -hmm. that feature them. You know, uh, the classic one is Marie Antoinette, um, featuring Kurt's, Kirsten Dunst. The Scarlet Pimpernel features that family quite prominently. Um, but I think, like, it's like, you know, this is more of a fairy tale like thing. That's why she's featured a lot more than other historical figures in history. Mm -hmm. 
So these ladies are librarians here at <laughs> the Eckhart yeah, Public Library. <laughs> Um, that this is Rebecca Mann and Bree Weeks, and we are so happy that you came on the show. <laughs> thank you, ladies. <laughs> and I want to thank the two men behind the camera, Zach and Andrew. Say hello to the folks, please. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And again, we're live, and you can come down anytime and watch the show. And I want to thank you again, Brie Weeks <laughs> and Rebecca Mann, for being on the show. Thank you for having oh, us. This was a lot of fun. And I want to thank you. Oh. <laughs> and I want to thank you for watching the show. I hope you'll both come back mm -hmm. another time and we'll talk we'll about, about yeah, 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 definitely. Th th think about it. Mm -hmm. I hope you will. <laughs> and if we didn't get to any other questions via Facebook Live or anything like that, this will be posted on YouTube, mm -hmm. right, correct? Okay. That's right. And... Um, Rebecca and I will look back on those and if there's any questions that we missed or anything like that we will answer them or if you saw it and you know missed it they're like hey you know you can give us a call we will happily answer your questions when it comes to this or if you want to know more about Anastasia and the family and find more materials please give us a call here at the Eckhart Public Library and our phone number is <laughs> <laughs> I should have this memorized but I don't I'm not a machine Two. Six zero nine two five two four one four. That's our main number. <laughs> and that tell us again the, the phone number, the library, so the folks can call anytime mm -hmm. they need help. <laughs> so if you ever have any questions and want to find out more information on Anastasia or anything here at the Eckhart Public Library, please call us at two six zero nine two five. 2414. Thank you. And again, I want to thank the lovely librarians, Bree Weeks and Rebecca Mann. And we'll see you next week. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.